Chapter Two of Claude Lightfoot, or How the Problem Was Solved by Father Francis Finn. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Two, in which Claude attracts the attention of his teacher. Claude, during the morning hour preceding recess, had passed through all the formalities required of a newcomer. It was after his interview with our three poets that he made his first appearance in the class of third academic frank elmwood had discovered a problem in claude it devolved upon the teacher of third academic to attempt the solution mr grace was an excellent teacher in point of order his was a model class and his pupils with scarcely an exception were impressed by the piety and devotion which he taught by example as well as by word but his influence was by no means in keeping with the respect which he inspired many of his scholars all his lively boys in fact were content with simply admiring him they did not understand their teacher he did not understand them his words of counsel his exhortations failed to reach their hearts they revered mr grace they esteemed him they would be willing were the matter directed to their attention to sign a petition for his speedy canonization and to give witness to his heroic virtues but the heights of their admiration reached that thinner air where there is no thriving growth of imitation mr grace had never been a real boy he had grown from childhood to manhood with his eyes fixed upon the upper realms his school companions had called him a saint and unstinted in their words of praise had subjected him to all manner of teasing without meaning it they had frequently not stopped short of downright cruelty the saint had borne his trials with such open-eyed wonder and unchanging meekness that he had in the long run subdued nearly all his tormentors nevertheless these petty persecutions had left upon him an indelible impression he had noticed without accounting for the fact that there were two kinds of boys boys that teased him and boys that did not his observations moving a step further had led him to perceive that those who teased him were wild noisy full of life and those who did not were gentle quiet and pleasant of manner now mr grace had nothing of the dramatic faculty he could not put himself in another's place as a boy he could not understand his lively companions as a man he met with the same difficulty he still recognized but two classes the wild and the quiet he was too charitable to allow himself to think any boy with whom he had to deal really bad but if he had been forced to a decision he would certainly have classed all quiet boys as being good and all noisy boys as being bad and after his first hour's experience with claude i dare say that he would have put that young gentleman's name at the very head of the latter list but if mr grace failed to sympathize with the harem scarums he none the less managed them well he was quite a disciplinarian and his firmness and method succeeded only partially it is true in atoning for his invincible lack of insight mr grace took in at a glance something of the excessive liveliness which distinguished claude at this period of his development and in consequence seated the young wriggler on the front bench which directly faced the professorial chair before the end of an hour mr grace discovered that in the way of fidgeting he had sadly underestimated claude's capacities and yet claude was clearly on his best behaviour he opened his book with a fixed expression of resolve upon his face and following each word with his finger-end and with a painstaking movement and mumbling of the lips he thus entered upon his college career with an output of zeal too intense to stand the wear and tear of many minutes it was the hour assigned for arithmetic class 
and Mr. Grace had allowed his scholars five minutes to memorize the rule for compound proportion. Before half of that time had expired, Claude raised his hand, and fixing his dancing eyes full upon his teacher, snapped his fingers. Forty boys grinned quietly and became interested. Shh! warned the teacher. I know that rule, mister. Just hear me say it. An unmistakable giggle went from one end of the room to the other. It was short-lived, for Mr. Grace's stern glance was the signal for perfect stillness. Mr. Grace left his seat, and, bending over Claude, whispered in his ear, "'My boy, no one is allowed to snap his fingers in this class. There's no need of making such a noise. If you want to call my attention to anything, simply hold up your hand. Again, no one should speak in class, not even to me, without permission. Claude was crushed. It was not the substance of what was said that subdued him, but the manner. The quiet, subdued whisper is the strongest weapon against a youngster's boisterousness. If he shout and the professor answer in kind, the confusion gathers force but a whisper in return a quiet look these are too much mr grace knew this secret of discipline and i must confess sometimes employed it to the verge of cruelty his method of maintaining order gave no outlet to the overflow of animal spirits he had never suffered from such an overflow himself Claude, with an injured expression, again bent his eyes on his book, while one hand went up absently to the top of his head and the other to his chest. The former hand began patting the fair hair, while the latter moved up and down. It was quite a feat to do this. Any boy reader knows how hard it is. And Charlie Pearson and Dan Dockery, seated behind our hero, were in a subdued ecstasy of delight at Claude's deftness. Still conning his book, Claude's hands absently reversed their motions, the upper hand doing the rubbing and the other the patting. Charlie felt tempted to applaud, and Dan gave a snicker. "'Take your hand off your head and stop fidgeting,' whispered Mr. Grace." i ain't doing nothing study then i know this Shh. then this poor victim of classroom discipline innocently twirled his thumbs one going in the opposite direction to the other mr grace allowed this proceeding simple tolerance the five minutes being up the teacher required all to close their books and beginning with the boy in the furthest bench heard the recitation while the first boy called upon was hesitating on the last three words of the rule claude received the following note anybody can twirl his thumbs why don't you wag one of your ears dan dockery before he had torn this note to pieces one of claude's ears twitched quivered and actually did wag restraint was no longer possible dockery pearson and some half-dozen boys broke into a roar mr grace had not witnessed the moving of the ear but he perceived from the fact that the laughers were watching claude that the cause of the disturbance was on the front bench come here claude with a skip and a bound which nearly upset the class dignity for the second time claude was at the teacher's desk why are you trying to disturb the class i'm not trying to disturb anything i was just trying to make my ears work and one of them wouldn't go there are professors who would have had some difficulty in keeping serious after this naive confession not so mr grace he looked upon the lively boy as being capable of saying or doing anything he never knew what the small boy might say or do at any given moment but it was all one to him he was ever expecting the unexpected so he received this explanation with unimpaired seriousness it's a great loss of time for you claude to give so much attention to your ears this is the place for learning not for gymnastics 
go to your seat and keep quiet i can't mister try your best claude if at first you don't succeed i'll help you with a few lines to memorize and mr grace smiled very sweetly claude on resuming his seat caught hold of his desk with both hands determined to reduce those unruly members to subjection and set about paying attention in a fresh spurt of zeal he seemed to forget that he had legs and feet however and kicked energetically into the air one little foot and then another flying up flush with the top of his desk mr grace while hurrying through the recitations ignored these demonstrations now said the teacher when all had been heard if claude will be good enough to put his feet where they belong and pay attention i'll show you how to carry out the rule you have just memorized claude was taken aback to such an extent that he could make no reply he had been all attention he had had his eyes fixed on mr grace and had devoured his every feature and in truth claude had been impressed with the fine low broad brow under the mass of soft chestnut hair with the noble eye clear steady unmistakably frank with the handsome oval of the face pale and somewhat thin yet revealing in its every line the student and the ascetic not a trait escaped his keen quick inquisitive eyes what struck him most of all was the air of holiness upon mr grace's features and just as he was making up his mind that he liked a man teacher far better than he liked any woman teacher there came this stinging rebuke how in the world could he be expected to keep track of his legs while bending all his forces to bring into proper subjection his hands and fingers and head and ears and at the same time follow everything that was going on in class but he was not utterly discouraged fastening a steady gaze upon his mischievous legs and bringing his hands folded before him so that he could embrace them in the same glance he resolved not to move a muscle till the end of class it was a heroic determination and indeed after three minutes the while mr grace went on working out in all calmness a problem at the blackboard there was hardly a part of claude's anatomy which did not claim his attention there was an ache here and a cramp there his face itched his feet threatened to go asleep and claude was morally certain early as was the season that a fly was disporting upon his neck ah if he could only capture that fly one minute passed in this state of torture the perspiration began to gather on the young hero's cheek a new ache another stitch uh, another fly so it appeared to claude then a host of itches seemed to swoop down upon him till at length the poor boy could no longer stand under a fire so galling he gave one wriggle and half rising from his seat stretched himself at full length ending the performance with a great sigh of relief while class and professor watched him with rounded eyes yawning isn't allowed whispered mr grace at his ear can i go out sir no you've only been in ten minutes let me go to the board and do a sum then i know how it's done mr grace did not quite understand this young gentleman's trouble but by good fortune some one had to go to the board and in consideration of the fact that claude was a newcomer he granted him this last request our little wriggler was now in his element snatching up a blackboard eraser he hopped from one end of the board to the other it extended the full length of the room rubbing out everything in his track with a superfluous energy and ceasing regretfully from his labor when there was nothing more to erase no sooner had mr grace enunciated the problem than in a fever of energy claude jotted down the conditions and not without many hops extraordinary bendings of the legs and much flying of chalk dust which powdered his pretty little face worked it out perfectly please mister give me another one 
couldn't you first explain the various steps you have taken oh yes sir whereupon our little claude who was very nimble of tongue and by no means timid launched into an explanation which he accompanied with some very expressive wriggles his request too was granted mr grace who was studying how to reduce this piece of animation to discipline thought that a half hour at the blackboard might throw some light on the question so claude got himself into layers of chalk and hopped about ecstatically and succeeded in showing that he was really first-rate in arithmetic when he returned to his seat he was quite quiet and beyond daubing his nose unintentionally with a bit of ink and dropping all his books with a thud upon the floor the last quarter of his first hour in class was in every way commendable End of chapter 2